All right, we're on. Uh, I'm Jay Owen, city engineer, uh, city Red Wing here uh, for the bridge update for June. I'm here with Mark Anderson, the project manager uh, with MnDOT. Um, an interesting, uh, interesting spring and in, that we've had here with the high water, but things. I'll let you jump into schedule, Mark. But things are uh, looking looking up with the river projections here. Hopefully, we don't get some weird rain events that are going to cause us uh, some more delays. But maybe we can go into that a little bit. We talked about that this morning with the contractor. Sure, it looked like um, they hope to be out on the river next week. Uh, maybe getting some tubs set. That would be great if the river follows its projection. So that would be a good start. Um, let's see what else they're doing. Some curb and gutter and sidewalk on 3rd Street and Bluff. Um, stripping the bridge decks that were poured a few weeks ago. That bridge, uh, that would be the... Uh, the 61, 60. 63 over 61 and okay. then the bridge over Bluff Street. So with the stripping of this bridge over 61, you might see some switches with the traffic control there. They're going to close the inside lanes when they're pulling the forms out from underneath or from yeah over those lanes okay so, so there'll be there'll still be tra it'll be open one lane will be open each, each direction. direction it's just it may change which one right, depending the on their operation the inside yeah okay all right so with the tub um with the river projections and the tubs being able to get uh to move moved out and, and set um are they how long a operation will that be let's say the water levels are good for us to work in the river if they start next week when will we see kind of all the spans done are you guessing uh i guess i don't really have a projection from them yet i would say probably a couple of weeks yet a couple of weeks for getting all that bolted together and right and getting them lifted into place and bolting the splices in so place. It, it sounds like they still um the gap is a little bit wider than what they have i heard this morning they have to jack right jack the bridge or jack the beat the gut the girders a little bit to get them to fit into place i believe okay okay so. good um yeah, the people have uh, been asking me, there's a lot, all of a sudden they changed their operations as we talked about last uh, bridge update. Um, their operations as far as their tub delivery was moved down to our bulkheads. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of activity down there, cranes and, and bolting uh, big tub girders, the sections together before they move them out to set them. So that's what all that activity is for the bridge project that was gonna be all planned to begin with to start from the Wisconsin side or mobilize from Wisconsin. And then with the high water and their causeway flooded, they moved it to the, the Red Wing side. So the activity's been heavy down there, but they've kept the road open. And, uh, and when they've had to close a lane or so um, in, in one direction, they've done, had flaggers down there. So, yeah. And I believe all the tubs are, I think they're all being delivered, or the last one is being delivered today. So, so the, all the pieces are there. Right. It's a matter of bolting them together and then bringing them out uh, one, one run at a time. And there's three runs to set for the for the main span there so and then um with that being done we talked this morning that they're going to follow up right away once that main span is in and start uh decking operations on the on the main river span correct yep okay and i think there's going to work on the uh wisconsin span too there's still two spans of concrete okay. deck that can be poured so once the water comes down over there they'll get those get that two spans poured okay and then that would be yeah the sp those are the spans that are on the concrete beams on the wisconsin right. side so okay well speaking of the wisconsin side any um updates uh on the settlement and you know we've we've experienced uh with this high waters affected how our how, how we're seeing that grade settle on the surcharge over there correct? right we are still seeing some settlement from the um, settlement plates the uh, elevations that have been shot on those but we haven't been able to get any data from the piezometers over there due to the high water pressure the pore pressure and that so we're not really sure where we're at with that right now okay we need the water to come down and to be able to get the readings that you need to take on the on that settlement um, I also heard this morning, is there a little bit more surcharge embankment that needs to be built that they haven't, they may be able to get started on um, soon here? What they, for the bypass number three, I think they call it over the oh, box culvert, okay. it wasn't built to full height and width, so they still need to get that completed once. That's what they were talking once about. Once the water goes down a little bit, so they can get back in there. And that bypass will then have a uh, roadway put on it so they can finish the box culvert? Is that what that, yep, on that correct. end, on the yep. Wisconsin side? Okay. And then, of course, we talked about looking at the schedule. There was there's a lot of retaining wall work on the Minnesota side that uh, that is uh, either stripping forms or pouring footings, all different stages depending on which wall you're talking about. And they're all kind of in that Red Wing shoe area, ADM area, right there. Right. Yep. They're all, in, and then there's the one between the 
61 bridge and the river bridge there's one next to, yeah next stadium like you mentioned there okay. so yep there's like three or four that they're still working on trying to get done here yep so that's that's a lot of the work you're seeing with the cranes and the, and the work that's going on on the minnesota side is the retaining wall work really not a lot of underground work right now other than we do have some punch list items on our sewer and water um the city sewer and water uh, stuff to, to fix uh here and there on some manholes but some minor items that that the contractor had was looking to get that scheduled and get in here so um and then it's you mentioned it but um i wanted to make sure people know we're, we're working hard on third street uh sidewalk and concrete getting poured there um paving plan for late next week um on third um we're still going to look at just how we're going to open that up we may we may look at just getting access to the driveways that are on there um, and because we don't have Potter Street completely put together yet because the slip ramp comes in and ties in at Potter. So some walls need to get done really to kind of finish off how that slip ramp ties in at Potter. So um, we'll see what we open with 3rd Street once we get, uh, get the paving done. For sure we do need to get some access to the businesses there for deliveries and things uh, with other projects in the area. So, um, but it's good to see that final surface uh, get put together and then we'll get that crosswalk reestablished, mm -hmm. which is right across uh, across third street there from the marie's corner over to the city park corner there and get that reestablished. so for pedestrians so um anything else with that or you want to show a few pictures and unless there's some questions we should yeah I'll, well yeah we got patty just walked in the door so we have someone from the chamber right. it may be a good Hi. yeah got a so we got uh, some audience members here. Um, Patty reminded uh, reminded us that we got tours planned yes. for uh, uh, next week, right? The 11th and the 18th at 11 a.m. And the sign up is at the chamber, correct? Yes. So the next two Tuesdays in a row are planned. And then we, if one gets rained out or something, we just go to the next, the following Tuesday, correct? And just, so we're looking at Tuesday tours here the next couple weeks. 11 a.m. Sign up at the chamber. Only so, 20 people. Only 20 people have signed up so far. No, only oh, oh, 20. Oh. It's limited to 20 per tour. Okay. All right. Um, how about let's do that. How about do we have any questions, Patty? Anything that you can think of? Uh, people are just asking about schedules. You know, okay. Are you still gonna do it? <laughs> like, yeah, we're we're going. Yeah. <laughs> so that's Good. mainly. The, the okay. Well, I mean, that's a question mark. I know we look at the three-week schedule and where things are and with the water pushing off, getting that final, those final tubs set. Has the contractor come back with the kind of the longer range outlook? I know our, is our completion date for the bridge opening September 20th, is that correct? Yep, that's correct. Um, right now their schedule shows them not completing that date about the three to four weeks, a little bit later than that. But okay, so they are showing their they, long range schedule showing but about- But they believe if they get the tub set soon that they will be able to get back on schedule. So, and would, so to get back on schedule, would that mean the work shifts, that are, they're going to go to a longer yeah, work week? Longer weeks work shifts, maybe the, double shifting, things Double like shifting that. on some of the work that they can do. Yeah. So could see some nighttime construction possibly. Possibly, to, right. To, to keep things moving, okay. It's good, I've had that question a lot too. Where's the, where's the tail end of this project looking at? But you know, three to four weeks if, uh, you know, would be would put us into October for completion, but maybe they can get back on with some schedule changes. They hope to, yeah. right? And then don't. There's always the the next year or two. We do have another year of construction after this one. Yep. Or part of year, I guess. Part, part of next year, yeah. Right. Okay. Any other questions we got from the audience? You can think of, or you said you can actually adjust what's already up. They will be adjusting the piece that they're putting in. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And they, I think their adjustment is only from the Minnesota side, correct? Is that the one that adjusts? I believe uh, so. That's one. Yeah. That's everything. Really that's the one that has the expander. Though. Yeah. So they purposely have it a little bit wider than is is needed right now, but they then they can push the one side in to to make the to make the final connection. Those bolt holes got to be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. The bolt. Yep. Sir, the bolt holes have anything. So yeah. Yeah, yep. Our Mark's out there trying to pound them in with. <laughs> Not happening. Not you. Okay. Have they floated the girders up yet? No. Okay. Pat, they're been down. Trying to watch and be like on. 
spot. Yeah. They're sitting in the. Circling. They're still at the bulkheads. Patty asked, "Have they floated the girders up yet?" And they have not. They they've got the first one all bolted together and ready to move up. And they, you might have missed it. They are looking at next week, Patty, uh, yeah. for the first floated up and and uh, and place one. So. Do you know like a date yet or no? No, not really. He kind of just said mid next week. So it, the the project the river projections are favorable. <laughs> For them to do that, and that's what they've, we've seen today's uh, today's forecast from the the weather uh, NOA or whatever the weather forecast look good for for next week tub girder placement. So, so we'll take them one at a time up to the bridge. Correct. The question one at a time, and that is right. There will be three three spans or three different tubs, and they'll go one at a time. And and uh, I know that current when that water was over 13, they, that current was pretty strong out there for them to be doing any work. That's why they said we have to wait till um, 11, stage 11, and then on a downward trend before they even want to start on this. So, yeah, I believe they yeah. tried bringing the, one of the barges in a tug down river, and, and it took them almost an hour to get back upstream. So. Yeah, against that current. So, yep. All right, Mark, should we uh, show a few of the pictures of what's happened recently here? So the first picture I have is um, when the contractor was pouring the concrete deck of the, highway, the bridge over Highway 61. Oh, hold on, let's go back to that. I get there. There, there. We got it. You okay. Switch back to that first one again, Oops. if you can. Yep. I just gotta. Okay. Now we got it on the on the TV here. Yep. All right. So that's the de deck over over 61 there. Right. Yep. yep. That's placement of the concrete over the highway over 61 with okay. the bid well. It's a lot of rebar in there. <laughs> Stainless steel too. Stainless steel rebar. Long life. Um, picture of the concrete flat work that's going on on 3rd Street. This is the corner of, must be 3rd and Potter. 3rd and Potter, yep. yep. You see our light pole there, Patty? Those are the foundations. We'll have the same uh, match our city lighting scheme that we've got now downtown. Awesome. Yep. Okay, so a yep. question on that. Will yep. it be the same level as downtown, same height, or will it be as corridor? Uh, Patty asked about the light poles that are going here. Will they be the same as the downtown? And they will be. They won't be the the, top, the higher ones on the uh, on the gateway. They'll be the acorn shape and the same height as you see on Third and, and Bush and everything downtown. So, yep, real really match in nice. Picture of some retaining wall work along the Red Wing Shoe building there, um, as that comes in along the slip ramp. Some concrete work um, on Bluff Street, uh, getting the sidewalk and the driveways poured. So the wall that you see in the background, Mark, that is the wall, the button hook, correct? Correct. Coming down, okay. Contractor underneath the bridge over 61, uh, working on pulling out the form work. This is over in the area of um, by the Red Wing Shoe parking lot, there was some hazardous material that's been pulled out and is being stored there for the time being. Was that um, a uh, tank that was found, or was uh, it? That's the MGP, that manufactured gas pipe that was sitting there. Okay. And then it did lead into a vault. It led into a vault, yeah, and then the you had. It was pumped out of that vault, and I believe it removed. And had a contract subcontractor come in and, and pump that out to yeah. test it and dispose of it properly? Correct, yep. We're just waiting to find out where we can send this pipe. Get rid of the pipe too. It's always fun in old downtowns to dig because you just never know. <laughs> I'm not saying it's fun, but <laughs> interesting. Interesting, yep. yeah. Yeah. And here's a picture of the uh, some grade being built for the uh, retaining wall. I believe that goes between the bridge over 61 and then the bridge to Bluff Street there. Okay. And a picture of one of the tubs down at the um, bulkhead in the upper harbor. And um, the contractor did some practice or some test runs on the decking for the 
tub graders, so that's the shop. Oh, okay, so this is really abutment. on the Minnesota side from the Minnesota abutment out to Pier 1, kind of across the railroad tracks right there. Right. And yep. of course, they, they were just doing some forming just to kind of get practice on it. They can't start that operation until the whole span is complete. Right, they have to have all the tubs in place. So they're just looking at how they're going to do their timbering and their carpentry work to form. And that's it. Okay. Can you go back, Mark, to the one that shows the, the, the Potter Street corner concrete? So I've had some questions there. So you can see there's a strip of, uh, there's a strip of concrete out in the roadway right there. And that actually, that's not, um, that's a bike trail that will tie into the trail that goes across the bridge. So the, the road is, what you see is gravel will be uh, bituminous pavement, but the bike path right there is concrete. Um, and there's a median that separates it. You can kind of see the median right along there. Yep, Mark's got it there, then drive opening. So that'll tie into our third street there and then go across the bridge as a 12 foot bike trail all the way into Wisconsin. So that's the start of it right there. Okay. Why, why stainless in some of that rebar instead of just plain old rebar? So the question was um, why stainless rather than either bare rebar or epoxy coated rebar? And I guess, Mark, you can kind of step your way through the, the, the yeah. best rebar. To, yeah. yeah, I guess the, the stainless is supposed to be the most durable. It's supposed to last the longest so they don't have to replace the bridge decks. It's better. It's a lot more expensive. Right. Yeah. It's supposed to have a, I believe, a 50-year lifespan. Yeah. And we've never. We use a uh, at, at the city. We use a lot of epoxy coated rebar, and I think MinDot did that for years and years as well. The green, but green the green coated rebar is the epoxy coated rebar, um, and uh, and they've gone to the stainless on a lot of your bridge work, isn't it now? And I think it's more the high high dollar projects. You know, we use a lot more stainless. Yeah. Just on for smaller long. regular projects, we still use a lot of epoxy. Epoxy coated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's just longevity and uh, yep, big projects here. They want to get the 100 year lifespan for this project. So yep, go, to the, go to the better quality. Good question. Patty, anything else? Any other questions from anyone? The, I've heard that the grain barges are kind of on hold right now. Is that going to help with the bridge? It's, it's actually helping them as far as their coordination being in the middle of the river without without shipping occurring and you are correct they are on hold i think the I think it was in our notes and we talked about it that the locks are closed to st louis to st louis so that is going to allow them to have some better work windows on the river um, and not having to work around barge traffic coming through so that's close to how long till the river reaches a certain depth again yeah that I, I don't know when they make that determination or the Corps, you know, working with the ship, the shippers on when they open those back up, the Army Corps of Engineers. So I don't know that answer for sure, but it is closed as of right now for shipping. Yeah. Has that affected any of the train traffic? The question if it's affected train traffic no. is as far as. Oh, oh um, no, they've been coming through. So, yep. <laughs> yep. They're up a little higher that they the trains can. Yeah, the trains keep coming, yes. Yep. And surprisingly, there is a, a fair number of trains. And they may be even busier with the barges shipping. That's what I was wondering. It might have actually, there may be some more shipping onto the rail because of the barge, uh, the hold up with barge. So, and that. Are the tours full? Not yet. The qu questions asked if the tours are full, and they are not full yet. So get down to the chamber, sign up, and uh, come the, one of the next two Tuesdays here. So then I had uh, just a quick update with the with our as long as we got you here the Levy Park project um, with these favorable uh, river projections. We are looking at getting started here in the next uh, week or two on on work um, with our uh, with our Levy Park improvement project. So. Meyer Contracting will be getting back in, in town and get started here on, on the work they can do as this river recedes. So that's the update on that project. And Mark, do you have anything else to add? As we're still, we'll be on again for July. What's our next date here then? It's already June. <laughs> the first or second? 
Yeah, we talked about maybe making a change to that, right? Let's get that. Yeah, we can keep it on July 2nd. Yeah, that works. That should be fine. Yep. So next bridge update is July Tuesday, July 2nd. Keep it on our normal schedule. All right. Thank you. Thank you.